Hi everyone! In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to draw a Springer Spaniel in pastels. Like with any portrait, regardless of the medium, I will always do the background first. And as you can see from the photo in the corner, which is my finished portrait, I decided to do a bluebell background for this. Now the reference photo that I had just had a, a standard background, you know, there wasn't anything overly interesting about it, and I was asked if I could create something unique. Now because the dogs had some purple colouring in the fur, a bluebell background immediately jumped out to me. It's just the first thing that I thought of. Now if you'd like to see how I did that background, then I do have that available as a, um, a full length slow tutorial on Patreon. So if that's of interest, along with all of my other real time tutorials, I will link that in the description below. So once I've put the eye in, and again I always start with the eye when I start the subject, it's where the main expression and emotion stems from, so I do want to make sure that I've got that right. Once I've done that, I then start mapping in the fur. Now if you've seen any of my other videos here on YouTube, you'll know that I put a lot of emphasis on my base layer stages and then the layering process. At the time of doing this portrait, because it was a couple of years ago now, I was using my sanded soft pastel stick method and that works really well. But I have now since used my pan pastels for most of my portraits just because then I can reference exactly what colour I am using on my Patreon tutorials. But if you don't want to invest in pan pastels, then sanding down some soft pastel sticks, Rembrandt is my um, brand of choice for those, then that works really well. So when it comes to spaniel ears, they are definitely one of the more challenging elements to get right of any spaniel portrait. I do have a dedicated spaniel ear focus study tutorial on Patreon as well, and we really do break down the layering process. You can see here that once I've put in my base layer, I am then just focusing on very small sections and I'm only mapping in my lights and my darks initially, just blocking in the shapes that I see. Once I've done that, I then go back over the top with my pastel pencils, focusing on the fur that would be closest to the skin and building up from there. The lower portion of the ear, as you can see here, that's slowly coming together, this is that very first layer of detail that I mentioned. All of this fur, the clump of the little um, strands of fur, is what would be closest to the skin. It's now at this layer here, where I'm now building up that additional layer and I'm slowly making my way to the top. This is the best way to tackle spaniel ears because you will end up with a far more photorealistic fur texture. Sometimes when we're working on what we can see first, so if I was to stroke this dog, that's the fur that I would come in contact with, that needs to be left until the last layer. If you draw that first, the fur will look very two dimensional and you won't have as much depth, which for a spaniel ear is obviously the complete opposite of what we are going for. We want this fur to look really thick. So layering in that way, what's closest to the skin and working up is definitely the best way to do it. So before we go on to the other elements, if this video so far has been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up because it makes a real difference. And if you do want to get notified of future content, I upload three videos to YouTube every week, then hit the subscribe and the bell button. So I have a video here on YouTube and it is focusing on my top tips for drawing fur and if that's of interest I'll link that in the description below. Now those three things initially that I focus on are fur direction, fur length and then the fur thickness. These three things will ultimately change what that animal looks like if we don't get them accurate to that reference photo. The main reason being the fur direction is determined by the underlying bone and muscular structure. Take for instance these white details between the eyes. Look at how both sides curve in different ways. So on the left side it curves over towards the left eye and then up towards the middle of the head. The right hand side does the opposite. It goes over to the right hand side and then sweeps up to the top. So the fur direction here is really important. You also want to make sure that the fur between the eyes does start to slope up at the right angle. If we don't get the fur direction with our pencil strokes accurate, we can then make it look like the dog's got a really long muzzle, so we don't want to do that. The fur direction on any part of the face is really important. One thing as well that you'll notice is I do like to work in small chunks. I think for me, it really does break down the process. I become far less overwhelmed with the drawing that I'm working on because I am only focusing on a few square inches at one time. Now with this ear, this is a prime example of why I do my backgrounds first. Look at all of those details that are overlapping that green background. 
This is therefore making it look like the dog is in front and the background is behind, which is exactly what we want. These little details that overlap the background will make a real difference to your portrait. We don't want there to be any harsh edges, especially when we're working on a longer coated fur like the Spaniel is. If you're working on something like a Staffordshire Bull Terrier or a short coated Jack Russell, you will still have the odd one, two or three details that overlap the background. But of course, because that's a significantly shorter fur type, it's not going to be as many details as something like this Springer. But still really zoom into that reference photo if you're using a tablet and notice where you have these tiny little details that overlap that background. If you've seen my other videos here on YouTube, you'll know that I focus on the contrasts. I wanna make sure that my darks are dark enough and that my lights are bright enough. This is definitely gonna make a huge difference with how realistic the portrait will look when finished. And this is definitely really important when drawing dog mouths. Now I do have a dedicated video here on YouTube that shows you this process. I'm using a section of a German Shepherd portrait. So if that's of interest with how I tackle the mouth, the gum, you've also got a lot of the German Shepherd's teeth on show as well, then I will make sure to link that in the description here. The main thing that I wanna do as well is I want to make sure that I've got my highlights nice and bright on the areas where I can see any real shine where the gum area might be wet. Having these bright white highlights is gonna make the gum and mouth area look like the light is catching, so therefore it's gonna make it look like it has that wetter appearance. If you don't have as much of that contrast in place, the mouth is just not gonna have the same degree of depth, exactly the same with fur. The contrast is something that is so important with any element. It could be grass, sky, any element at all. It's the contrast that I wanna get right. And this is here where you're gonna see it's a prime example. When drawing white fur, white is never truly white. Usually the brightest part of a portrait is gonna be the reflection in the eye. When it comes to white fur, it's very reflective. So there are gonna be many additional colors that are gonna be bouncing up and catching all of those white details. Now I have uploaded a sequence of three tutorials here to YouTube and it's focusing on how to draw white fur. For that portrait, it shows a white poodle. So you've got various different textures there, the smoother, longer fur on the ears, and then the curlier fur on the body. So if those tutorials are of interest, I'll also pop them in the description too. But you can see, just like when drawing dark fur, I always make sure that I've got a really good base foundation. I have also got made sure that I don't have any harsh edges at all. If you have harsh edges on a base layer, it's very hard to then get the fur looking soft when you build up your additional details. This is one of the main advantages when working with pastels. We don't have to worry about you not being able to blend those layers. They really do blend out beautifully, regardless if you're using pan pastels, soft pastel sticks, or the pastel pencils themselves for the base layers. You can see here that I am just using my pencils for the base foundation. I haven't used pan pastels or sanded soft pastel sticks at all. You can still get the same outcome, but of course it's just gonna take a little bit longer. But you really don't have to go out and invest in every single option in terms of the soft pastel sticks and pan pastels for your base layer. Now that I've zoomed out here, you can really see the importance of the fur direction. This is just at the in-between length, so the Springer Spaniel chest fur is not as long as something like a long-coated German Shepherd, but it's somewhere in between. I wanna make sure that I've lengthened my pencil strokes accordingly so that I've got the texture right. Now, one thing I wanna quickly mention as well is in the corner, you can see the um, chocolate Cocker Spaniel that is sat next to this Springer. I do have a section of her tutorial where you can see how I created the shine on her coat because that's really beautiful. So if also that's of interest, I will pop that in this description as well. So as we work on this section of the body, I was really being careful to make sure that I got my fur direction accurate. This is something that I talk a lot about in all of my Patreon tutorials. I always try to explain and imagine in my head while I'm working on that section, what is under the skin here. So in this case, this is where the shoulder blades are and the front legs start. So I wanna make sure that I've captured all of that freedom of movement, the fur direction, the waves, the shadows, the highlights, to make sure that I'm showing the structure underneath the skin. It is so important. And here is a photo of the finished portrait and the reference photo in the corner. So you can see just how much I changed with this and it worked really well because of the colors that were already incorporated in the fur. 
Now one quick tip that I would just like to mention, if you do change the colour of the background, and for instance here I've got a lot of those purples and those greener tones, you do want to make sure that you pull that into the fur of your subject so that they also do look like that was taken as the original reference photo. You don't want to add a different background in and then someone realise that they're two separate images. So I really hope the tips and techniques that I've shared here have been useful. If they were, as I've said, I'd really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference. If you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below. And if you do want to get notified of the content I upload, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'm going to be uploading another video here to YouTube next week.